Time for some Caribbean football now on the zone. The first phase of the CONCACAF Under-20 World Cup qualifying began earlier Friday with four matches already completed. In the opening game in Group B, El Salvador slammed the Turks and Caicos Islands 7-0. Also in Group B, hosts Antigua and Barbuda defeated Guyana by four goals to nil. In Group D, action at the Hasty Crawford Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago, Canada defeated Dominica by seven goals to nil. While in Group E, the opener in St. Kitts and Nevis, Haiti were three one winners over the Cayman Islands. There are six groups and the group winners only will advance to this summer's 12 team CONCACAF Men's Under 20 Championship. Now the top four teams from that tournament will qualify for the 2025 FIFA Men's Under 20 World Cup in Chile. Let's remind you of the groups that are being con contested here in CONCACAF. Cuba, Nicaragua, Belize, British Virgin Islands and Anguilla in Group A. Group B will have El Salvador, Antigua and Barbuda, Suriname, Guyana and the Turks and Caicos. In Group C, Guatemala, Curaçao, Aruba, St. Martin, that's French St. Martin and Barbados. The teams in Group D are Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica, that group being played in TNT. Haiti, Puerto Rico, St. Kitts and Nevis and the Cayman Islands are in Group E in St. Kitts and Nevis. Group F has Jamaica, Bermuda, Grenada and Martinique. Okay, so let's learn more about the teams expected to do well in this competition. And to do so, we are joined by 2006 Trinidad and Tobago World Cup defender Brent Sancho. Of course, TNT um, has appeared at the Under-20 World Cup as well back in 1991 with uh, Dwight York and Angus Eve and Jaron Nixon and company. Some of their outstanding players um, who transitioned to senior football well also. Uh, Brent, your thoughts on uh, this? Um, well, first of all, how the groups are set up. I know one of the groups being played in TNT there, one match already finished. Um, how competitive do you think these qualifiers will be? I think it'll be interesting. Obviously, the under-20 level really gives you a, a, a better reflection uh, as it relates. And it's a bit closer to senior national team football. It is a jump from under-17 as you would have mentioned, Lance, that some of these teams would have played in recently, as recent as uh, 2023. Uh, so this is a bit of a jump. This is where really players are now starting to get regular first-team football at the professional level. Uh, so the have and the have-nots start to separate themselves here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, already Trinidad is in a very difficult group against, of course, uh, Canada, St. Vincent and uh, Dominica. And obviously Canada might just shave it as being the favourites for this contest here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, as you know, one team qualifies out of this group. Uh, so it really comes down to how well, uh, of course, uh, Trinidad can navigate their way through the other teams and, of course, how well they can do against Canada. Yeah, and we know that sometimes in the Eastern Caribbean, uh, a lot of these teams in the OECS are ill-prepared for this level. So, And you've mentioned how tough the TNT group is, Brent. So not entirely surprising that the Canadians would have beaten Dominica by seven goals to nil in the past hour. Yeah, when you look at uh, reports coming out of this group, uh, St. Vincent has been in preparation for quite some time as well. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago had their preparation started last year up until November of last year. They had still 32 players in camp, so that suggests that they were still trying to melt the team down into some sort of uh, composition that would be partaking in, in these games here. Uh, of course, they played a couple of friendlies against Jamaica and one against a local outfit in Queen's Park uh, Cricket Club. Uh, that was their last outing. Uh, the team uh, boasts of, of uh, Michael Kidd the only recognized, quote-unquote, professional that plays at Crystal Palace, albeit, of course, with their youth setup. Uh, a lot of uh, schoolboy players, Lance, that would have partaked in the SSFL that we saw right here on Sportsmax. Uh, but uh, in stark contrast, a Canadian team that boasts six uh, players that play in Europe uh, with clubs such as Inter Milan and Sheffield United. So... Uh, it's going to be tough for Trinidad, of course, as you mentioned, uh, the, the teams in the Caribbean do struggle with preparation. I just mentioned Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent not really playing any international friendlies, but this Canadian team comes in and the backdrops have participated in the Under-17 uh, World Cup in Peru and, and of course, have a, a couple of players that partake, uh, partook in that and, and do feel that they come into this uh, group stage as favourites. Yeah, um, the Canadian result actually finishing up at eight goals to nil 
and uh, the Haiti Cayman game still ongoing. Haiti leading now by four goals to one in that group over the, the, the Cayman Islands. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the St. Kitts and Nevis group, Brent, because um, there was about five or six years ago uh, some Olympic qualifying football, which is under 23, but at the time the players were like under 21. Um, and St. Kitts and Nevis topped a group that included Jamaica. So we know that there are times that um, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago are not foregone conclusion uh, f against their Caribbean, Caribbean rivals. Um, your thoughts on the St. Kitts and Nevis group and, and how, how well might they do there? Yeah, the reports coming out uh, of there is that they, they have a team that's been in training as well for quite some time. Uh, just like St. Vincent, uh, and one or two of uh, the other groups, uh, Lance, they, they've had been, had some extensive training. I think the challenge for St. Kitts and St. Vincent, Antigua, et cetera, so they haven't really prepared and prepared in the right way in play in friendly internationals. A lot of training has taken part. As you saw the list of group, the favorites to come out of that group, of course, is Haiti, who has had uh, an established training program and regime uh, where these players have been in training for quite some time. So... Uh, what has timed the progress in terms of preparation for some of these U20 teams is actual games. And we know, all know how important it is uh, for these youngsters to play a couple of games before they get into the real stuff. So as much as the preparation in terms of training hours may have been significant, I think the playing uh, time of it or the playing regiment side of it has been quite poor. Yeah. And um, about the irregularity, Brent, with... Caribbean teams qualifying for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. What's, what's your take on that? Before we speak briefly about a couple of the other groups, including the Jamaica group. Look, it's a, it's a massive concern. And, and if you are part of CFU and part of the region, you should be very concerned. Uh, they, they, they seem to be a, a real slowdown in, in terms of progression. And even when there is progression into the bigger, into the latter stages, you see hefty lopsided defeats. And I think a lot of it lances down to the fact that I just mentioned a lot of these kids don't play enough of it, play enough international football. Gone are the days where a, a Grenada would travel across to Trinidad or vice versa, or Jamaica hop across to Haiti and play these sort of out of season games, out of uh, international window games. You just don't see it anymore, uh, albeit one down to, of course, a high course of travel throughout the region. And no longer, Lance, and this must be mentioned. We used to have, of course, a conquer uh, a Caribbean, a CFU Caribbean Cup at the U20 level. That's no longer in existence. So that is a challenge for match practice and international exposure for young players. So we are now seeing that when they come onto these stages, they're now co coming into their third or fourth international game when a player from Costa Rica and Mexico, USA, Panama, etc., uh, is playing well over 10, 15 games. Yeah, and uh, the Group F, Brent, with the Jamaicans up against... Bermuda, Grenada, and Martinique, those are the opponents for them. Um, the Jamaicans were in TNT a couple of weeks ago with a, a couple of uh, practice fixtures. I'm not sure if you were able to see any of them. But um, the Jamaica group not looking, not looking as tough as uh, maybe the Trinidad and Tobago group does. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Jamaica should be favorites. But uh, must, a lot must be said about Grenada and the work that they have put in. They've, they've recruited uh, six players from overseas, two of them. Uh, play at top top flight clubs, one from Crystal Palace and one from Fulham uh, that seem to be catching the eye. So I don't think necessarily that's going to be a walkover for Jamaica. And if I was to pinpoint any team in that group that should give the Jamaicans uh, some sort of a run, I would suggest that Grenada would be that team. Yeah, and uh, Bermuda did have an upset result over Trinidad and Tobago in some uh, big man football some years ago, didn't they, Brent? <laughs> Yeah, that was many moons ago. I remember that game very well right here in the in the center of excellence in Trinidad and Tobago, albeit, of course, Trinidad went to Bermuda and, and reversed the result and, and luckily escaped into the reaches of the, the World Cup qualifiers. But, uh, yeah, it has presented some surprises and, and teams like your Grenadas, et cetera, and St. Vincent do have the capacity of doing it. I just think at the U20 level, the match preparation or international match preparation is just not extensive enough to really... Uh, of course, give them the impetus to get the type of result that maybe they could get. Okay, Brent, um, I think we're going to talk to you a little later on the show as well because there's some more football to, to, to talk. <laughs> but um, just stand by. We continue our football discussion <laughs> here. And Mariah is standing by as we continue our football discussion on The Zone.
Yeah, thanks for that, Lance. We stay on course with football as the Constant Spring football field in St. Andrew, Jamaica, will this Sunday, February 25th, host the inaugural staging of the All-Star Football Tournament. The tournament will feature the standout players from the Jamaica Independent Schools Association, Preparatory and Primary Schools League, and the Inter-Secondary Schools Sports Association, that's the ISA Under-14 football competition. So joining us to tell us more is the competition director, Haron Martin. Hi, Haron. Good evening to you, Marion. Good evening to the viewers. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to have you in studio. And we're really excited for this competition that's set for Sunday. How are preparations coming along? Well, to tell you the truth, preparation is going on well. And um, based on what I saw, the players are very upbeat and they are anticipating ready to go on Sunday. Yeah, of course. I know they would be extremely excited. Tell us a bit about some of the youngsters to look forward to. Well, I can tell you, it's, it's an all-star game. There's yeah. a lot of youngsters. I can't pinpoint any one or two players. These players are all specials. And um, I can tell the public just to come out and see some good entertaining football. Yeah, and what I know is the winner of the competition will be getting a trophy. And, of course, it's not a regular trophy. No. It's in the name of somebody very special. And you can tell us more. Yes, the, the trophies are named after two special players, two Jamaican legends, of course, um, Walter Boyd and, um, and Alan Cole. I believe the all prep versus all primary game, they will be playing for the Walter Boyd trophy, and the U14 South versus U14 North will be playing for the Alan Cole trophy. Yeah, that's something very, very special, and I hope the players understand what's on the line. You said it's an affair, you know, family can come out, um, anybody can come out and support. What's the price for a ticket? Well, children 12 and under is for free and um, $500 for adults. Yeah, and what about the start time? What time do the gates open? Uh, gates open at 1 and um, game time, the all prep versus all primary game stated to start at 2.30 and the U14 game stated to start at 4 p.m. All right, so what I know for sure is you can't miss this. The, the viewers will be in for a treat. And, of course, you're inviting all the Jamaicans to come yes. down. And I mean, this, this is an opportunity for the players to come out and showcase their skill, showcase their, their, uh, their sportsmanship. And we at All Star Jamaica, we couldn't be any prouder. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for stopping by on the Sportsmax Zone and, of course, for inviting our viewers because I'm sure they have something now to look forward to come this Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, too. All right. So you don't want to miss this event. It's all the top youngsters from across Jamaica. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with you.